a major weekend here in the Research Triangle as the football teams play Saturday, the men's soccer teams play tomorrow night, but tonight the women's soccer teams take center stage as the North Carolina Tar Heels visit the NC State Wolfpack here in Raleigh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Adam Moore alongside Andrew Sanders here at the Dale Soccer Park in Raleigh for tonight's match between the 8th ranked North Carolina Tar Heels and the NC State Wolfpack. Andrew, tonight the Tar Heels are coming in really hot. NC State's been struggling a bit lately, but has looked good also. What do we expect from tonight's game? Well, NC State has really struggled to score here in ACC play, Adam. Only four goals all year, but all four of them have come in the last three matches. So they've been able to find the back of the net here recently, and you can look for Jenny Krauser and Brittany Stanko to really start the attack for NC State, and they might have an opportunity to counterattack as UNC plays a 3-4-3 formation, which is very aggressive but can be prone to the counter. Exactly. We'll look very much into the Carolina back line and see if they can hold off this high-powered NC State attack right now. Looking at Carolina, they've got a ton of players, lots of national team experience. What can we look for from the Tar Heels tonight? Well, they're really strong in the back with Crystal Dunn on the Herman Trophy watch list. But up top, Kalia Ojai coming off the game-winning goal in the championship match of the U-20 World Cup against Germany. She's going to bring the goals tonight for Carolina. They're strong all the way through the middle. Amber Brooks in the middle, the number one rated offensive uh, upperclassmen by top drawer soccer. So, so many weapons for UNC, and they'll look to attack NC State here tonight with that high pressure 3-4-3 formation. It's going to be a real interesting night here at the Dale Soccer Park in the ACC finale for both teams. Kickoff is next. Welcome back to the Dale Soccer Park for tonight's matchup featuring the number eight North Carolina Tar Heels and the hosting North Carolina State Wolfpack. Again, I'm Adam Moore alongside Andrew Sanders for tonight's final regular season matchup for both teams. And UNC comes into this matchup with a 9-4-2 overall record, 5-3-1 in the ACC. North Carolina State a bit behind the pack this year, so to speak, a 5-13 record, 0-9 in the ACC, still looking for that first win. UNC leading all time as we see the starting lineups. We'll pa or the, excuse me, the Tar Heels bringing in a lot of talent. Andrew, what are you looking for, um, for one, from one or two players from the Tar Heels tonight? Well, it really all goes through number 22, Amber Brooks, in the midfield. And you see they run that three forwards, four midfielders, three defensemen. So very aggressive formation. It, it, it'll be one way or the other tonight. Either Carolina will have a He's got to be the target for the Wolfpack on these set pieces, pieces, being one of the taller players listed at 5'9". what allows Carolina to play so aggressively is that they substitute a lot, kind of like a hockey team. They're going to bring out different squads out there, different lines. I we believe saw I saw number double zero, Alyssa Rich getting uh, in. Alyssa Rich is in the game, and Brooke Elby. we got Gentry coming in on the, on the back side again. Elby, Gentry couldn't get enough on this one as it just went too deep into the box and took the angle away. And Gay collects this one, and the Tar Heels can certainly breathe a sigh of relief as they've seen this once now that is deja vu over the goal that she scored earlier except for the fact that the scouting report on lb for carolina she's one of the quickest players on the team and that pace really made a difference as gentry was able to get by the defense last time this time not as much lb unable to stop the shot but she definitely angled her off a little bit made it a much easier save for adelaide gay We would certainly like, as, as you said, the, the Tar Heels will substitute liberally throughout and this game. I did not see the third there. She is Caitlin Ball also into the game. Carolina's going to take this one quickly going the other way. Gardner going deep, good header by Sawaya, defensively clearing the ball away. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a, a different defensive lineup for the Tar Heels. Although Satara Murray, who was playing, I guess you could say right back, although with three defenders, generally they're all considered center backs. She's now all the way, maybe a... Uh, try and quickly counter. There's Dunn. She has the pace. Look at her just run by everyone. Trying to go up the middle, she's unable to, but she's going to get the ball back. 
Dunn tries to uncork a shot. Didn't quite get enough of that as it sells. McFarlane, one of the subs comes in. That comes out to Ojai. Good save by Hopkins. She stayed on side. Good job right there by, by Ojai to somehow stay on. But even better job by Hopkins to quickly come out, be aggressive like we talked about, and make that play. Look at this. Not the best communication from NC State. Wojcik tries to close down. And right there, no one from, from NC State really ducks. But still an impressive stat. She's obviously been counted on for long stretches of time. Remember, this is a squad that substitutes a lot. So she is still counted on to play big minutes for the Tar Heel. See, Caroline Gentry wins the ball, and immediately four Tar Heel players on her ball. Moves it up. Nielsen drops it off. Elby, we've seen her speed. Let's see what she can do offensively with it. Coming down, Throper on her, goes to the middle. Done. Partially cleared away before Hopkins finally grabs that one. Another good run forward by this Carolina offense. They're just unable to make that last shot or last pass accurately. And we saw LB's defensive prowess. This time she makes a nice move, a run along the near sideline and whips the cross in. She really doesn't have a position for the heels. She's just a utility player, to use a baseball term, can come in and plug up anything that they need. Browns are outside to Spade. Spade's got some room. Over to Wojcik. Wojcik. The world not playing with their teammates. She has to come in, missing non-conference play along with Ojai, and then they get thrown into the fryer, basically, of ACC conference play. Another ball into the middle. Dunn can't quite get to that one as Hopkins comes out to grab it. Slow things down for the Wolfpack. Just over three minutes as you see it on the clock. Left here in the first half. Face off in football. Caroline's older brothers played football for NC State. Zach Gentry still on the team. She spayed with some room. She make, makes a nice touch, but Gardner's able to come back and collect for the Tar Heels. Gentry wins. Yeah, good communication from the official there because it seemed like uh, just a random whistle. It was away from the ball, pulling on his shirt there, saying that's what the, the foul was. Gentry knocks that one away. Tar Heels left to try again. Elby with the throw, finds Dunn. Dunn with a nice turn, trying to go down the line. Beats Sawalia to the corner and goes to the middle. Rich, unable to get that in. Back out to Elby. Bad first touch, but it works. Elby comes in, tries to go to the middle, is unable to, cleared away by Kaylee Schlaes. Megan Proper turns up field. Good job by the Wolfpack to escape right there, which is certainly what they did. Elby, yeah, it looked like her first touch was poor, but she immediately turned that in with a golden second touch and got by two pack defenders. Our official down the road at Garner High School, and she came out there with no pun intended, but a heads up play from <laughs> Megan Proper. It certainly was. Slays tries to go upfield, block. Wojcik can turn, tries to retain possession, but the Carolina pressure is just overwhelming. Paige Nelson turns it over. Dunn, she's going to come in. She's got room. Dunn with a risky first touch. Oh, it just slides just past Victoria Hopkins. From Coach Dunn. Where it is. Carolina brings in three players of their own. And they're bringing in Kelly McFarlane, Alyssa Rich, Caitlin Ball, and Brooke Elby. Again, the same four that they four brought players, in in the first half. Me. But, again, we see the same changes, and we'll see if that pass that was just slotted through was one of their better chances here. It, just for the, the overall numbers that they had, Carolina bringing a lot of players forward and a little action and reaction from the coaches. I mean, State brings in Stanko, fresh legs, a lot of pace, and Carolina counters with four new players of their own, and it looks like they're playing four along the back as well to make sure that NC State doesn't get a quick counter like that. And now... A foul is called as it looked like Wojcik was going to go the other way with it. And instead, it'll be a set piece from a pretty prime piece of real estate for the Heels. Katie Bowen is going to be in a good place as we see the substitutions that came in for the Wolfpack. Lebrano, Brooks, Morris, and Green all off the field right now for the Tar Heels. As Bowen's behind this one, ready to send it into the box. Player comes free. Good save by Hopkins. That was Kelly McFarlane, who was wide open in the middle of the box and was unable to put a better head on that as we get a good look at it here. Good, good, great delivery by Bowen. 
and McFarlane was open in the middle, just sent it up into the air instead of into the goal. Yeah, McFarlane still looking for her first goal of the season. She does have she's a couple. Sent out for a deep Wolfpack throw-in. Nice first touch from her. On a ball that bounced up high, took it off her forehead with plenty of speed out in front of her to make a play. Really tough play when, she, again, her first touch of the match. We see Stenko's number 17 games, as we said in the open, tied with the team lead with five goals with Jenny Krauser. Another Jar. deep throw in for the pack now. Colligan, a little cat and mouse all the way towards the corner flag, trying to earn a corner. Looks like she might try the same. She tried the turn that time. Again, read well by the Tar Heel defense. That's Brooke Elby who knocked that one out. We talked about no seniors on this NC State squad, but the future could be bright. We see Wojcik, Colligan, Stanko, all of these players, true freshmen, ODP experience, and, and they've really been some of the better players for NC State here today. They certainly have as Colligan finally loses one and it goes out for a goal kick. But as you said, the Wolfpack, they've got a lot of young players a lot of freshmen, sophomores that have had that have been forced to contribute, and they have, and it's clearly showing well that the younger players are doing a good job with Gentry scoring the first goal quickly down the field. Alyssa Rich into the corner. Rich down to the end line, tries to go to the middle. She can't, but it's laid off for Ojai. Good clear away. Good job by the Wolfpack and Stanko bleachers over there on that far side behind Hopkins, but never fear, we have found the ball. Moved ahead. Dunn, again, Dunn playing much more upfield now. Drops it in for Ojai. Ojai's going to take a shot. She goes far side. That's a goal. Kalia Ojai levels this, go this game at one for the Tar Heels. Nearly the same play that we saw on the Caroline Gentry goal. Nice turn here and finding the cutting. Kalia Ojai. Just deja vu, buries it along the far post. Nothing that Hopkins can do about that. Another goal for Ojai, her fifth of the season. And just now her 10th match. Fantastic finishing ability, and Carolina has evened it up at one apiece. As we said, Ojai's fifth of, fifth of the season, and she has performed well since returning from that U-20 World Cup that took place over in Japan. That is certainly a big goal and much needed goal for the Tar Heels. See how both teams respond. NC State, the wind out of their sails now, just under 25 minutes left in this match, ODP, etc. So, you know, you want some bragging rights, obviously. Primji to the far side. She's going to get it back in the middle, quickly up to Dunn. Dunn's turning, looking with speed, cutting towards the middle. Lays it off for Primji. Back to Dunn. Great play. Great save by Hopkins. Turn it. She saves it. What a save. Big Hopkins. On the first, she makes the play, and then she recovers and barely gets it with her foot to stop the goal and keep this game at one. Well, Adam, we'll take another look. It's a kick save and a beauty by Vic Hopkins. Somebody's got to stop the ball there from NC State on the fast break. Quick turn by Alyssa Rich, and Hopkins comes out with the boot to save the day, almost a quick fire double for the Heels. That was an absolutely great save right there from Vic Hopkins. The recovery ability from her. Bowen gonna line up on the track to take this one into the middle. Looking like it went, yeah, I, I believe it's gonna be a penalty. Yep. Not quite sure what the call is. I mean, obviously on corners, usually a lot of jersey grabbing uh, happening. I did see a Carolina player stumble, but you know, in the heat of play, I wasn't sure if it was if it was because of a foul or anything else. It looks like it's gonna be Rich here to take it. Alyssa Rich, the Tar Heels are three for three on PK so far this year. Hopkins getting her instructions. And we'll see what happens. Over the goal. She just booted it, Adam. And that was a, a huge blunder right there from Alyssa Rich. Big. You certainly do. That was a, a huge momentum swing right there as this crowd at the Dale Soccer Park is back on their feet after the 
Wolfpack have regained a second life. Maybe done. Comes in quickly. Good job by Hopkins to come out aggressively again and clear that away. Boy, NC State playing with fire right now. As strong as they were in the back with that bend but don't break mentality all of a sudden. And now Virginia 3-1 to one over Boston College. Not good news if you're a Tar Heel fan. And that two-goal lead for Virginia also means that they are now level with the Tar Heels on the goal differential, which is the initial tiebreaker. Yeah, it really case could of come down to that. And right now, even if Carolina gets out of this with the W, which is still very much in question, they really need to turn on the Jets here in, in order to get a couple goal cushion. Spades got still done, and she let loose a very fine shot. Boy, she can do just about everything. Defend, go on long runs. We've seen her rip a couple with the left foot earlier. Now watch this as she settles it with the right and lets off a rocket shot. It really doesn't matter to her. She can do everything. That ball goes out of bounds from Hopkins. But just lacking that, that finishing touch. Dunn's going to get another chance. She's going to win the race down the line. Beats Sawaya, but good job by her. Dunn gets it back. Dunn just running around everybody. Going near post. Good save, Vic Hopkins. Boy, that one was so dangerous because Dunn gets around the defense and she nearly sneaks it in. That was a save that Hopkins had to make because it's headed for the back of the net if she doesn't. The tough save for Hopkins going back across her body, and that ball certainly was laced for the right corner. Nice left-handed save, but, boy, there is no question. Crystal Dunn, fastest player on the pitch, and it's not even that close, it looks like. She has certainly played head and shoulders above everyone. The basketball match here in the last 18 or so, back and forth up the floor, they'll go. The turnover by Ojai on Wojcik. Tar Heels find Dunn again. Dunn trying to create. She can't. Stood up. Wolfpack unable to fully clear. Tara Murray going to drop it back to Gardner. The Tar Heels are going to slow things down a bit. And the NC State defense. And they drop their record down to 5-14, and 0-10 oh in the ACC. Carolina moves up to 10-4-2 overall, 6-3-1 in the ACC. A good showing from both squads. Really, UNC pulling away at the end. It was a, mo a much closer score or a much closer match than the score line would indicate. It was certainly a great one. Caroline Gentry gets the goal, but it was all Tar Heels after that. Our final score from Raleigh, North Carolina 4, NC State 1. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide, worldwide leader in sports. For Andrew Sanders and our entire casting crew, I'm Adam Moore saying thank you and good night from Raleigh.